so easy, isn't it? Just keep rubbing them little feet together. Guess that's how you can keep warm, too. Maybe that's the source of global warming. Crickets. What do you think? I don't think so. Anyway, it's all because we're not actually responding correctly. We're still trying to figure stuff out. Lots of storytellers, lots of stories, lots of documentarians, but that's where it ends. Noticing over and over and over, everyone stops at the story. They don't keep going. And that's what it's going to be taking. For as much as I certainly don't want to hear that, it's uh, it's going to be the, the, the truth. I don't know what else to say about it. If we stop at the story, and then we think that was enough. And if you look at what's going on, how can you even ration, be rational about that? How do you think that plays out? Just because you know a thing, that all of a sudden it makes the world right. And yet there's a population of people around the globe that think that's good enough. On the other hand, there are these evidences that you have to get out and do certain things. And we see that over there in France, and they're still go carrying on over there. Something I've suggested probably won't work so well in the United States of America. But then I've offered uh, alternatives in, in this alternative dispute world, which is not even within any body of law. And people haven't figured that part out. Then we're going to touch a little bit about the mechanisms working in your world today, right where you live. You probably don't even know about. It's been around, I told you, I've told you this over and over. Uh, things that we exist under almost all of our life, every, almost everybody listening to me has existed under conditions all of our lives and don't even know it. And again, a story pops up, my mind goes into all this history, and yet we t I take all that history and we've, we've attacked it already. We're already doing work against it. But there's not enough of us. That's why we... The, the idiom of the cricket keeps coming around and around. The only way to stop this aggression, the passive aggression, is to is we have to stop it uh, physically, with our physicality intercepting the problem. And this is on a bunch of different levels in a different subject matters. And I think it takes all of us in order to figure that out and to focus on the things that we're most capable of. Something I've, uh, well, before I get too far off, this is BTWRLM298. For those of you on past cast, podcast, recast, whatever cast, uh, you can get the, put that in the search engine, maybe reallibertymedia.com, maybe behind the woodshed, and you'll find the content links I'll, I'll link to, uh, that are the tabs of which are going bigger and bigger and bigger. In fact, this is probably the first, I think this is the first week in all the time I've ever been doing broadcasting, I could not throw any more tabs up. I just realized it was just too much to talk about. All interrelated, but I just can't get to it. I, I can't get to more and more subject matter just to tell you to go do something while no one really does anything. To me, it's just subjects that show we have a thing to do and how to go about starting to do that, whether we even understand how. And that's a thing that I've found we, over a couple decades now, and in particular the last decade and a half, we have as a society, do not even know how to function inside our own society. We'll complain about it all, but we won't, we won't function within it to help ourselves out. And what's interesting is we tend to do all the wrong things <laughs> out the gate anyway. It's uh, more of the, uh, I hurt, so I'm just going to react and not think about the future of my, re my actions today just to stop the pain today. And I think that's all part of the plan on what's attacked. They, these people know how you're going to respond. If they violate you, you're going to directly respond to that, not realizing that the fact that you address the violation and not who imposed it, and then before that, who who created that whole position to start with? You didn't look far enough into the into the matter before is what they prey on. And I try to keep looking at this to start showing you how to continue to look through what looks to be the face, the false front, the, the stalking horse issue, through to who's the one running, who's built the stock, who built the false front spaghetti western we live in. Now, one of the things that I haven't done in a long time, though I keep track of it, 
uh, just to go through this, and I'm going to move on, just to want to point something out. All these years I've been doing this, uh, I, something just came up here that I believe, and I did a Twitter on this. Anybody's involved with uh, going to see Twitter, and they can see what I'm doing there periodically. I, I made a comment here. This this next uh, discussion here that I'm going to have fairly perfects my prediction years ago of a vast hidden systemic abuse latent in Pennsylvania based upon my findings of systemic abuse within child children's services and courts when I did that research I've done around the 2000s that I've told you about. First exposed with those youth judges and Sandusky University and leading to the UK Savile, etc. Anybody who's listening to me knows I made pointers about all this was coming as each one developed. When a youth judges popped up with that, two judges in Pennsylvania popped up over the subject matter that they did, I said, there's a bigger, more ominous condition you're going to find there. And then I think Sandusky popped up. Then the condition certainly with the university he was involved with and how they responded and then their connections over to the UK. I said, this thing goes to the UK. And then you saw the Savile issue pop up. Why did I say that? Can I predict trends? No. You can see the evidence if you understand the the things that are going on in the system that everyone has turned their back to. The same system they, they complain about. Uh, children's services and through the rights of child has created another stocking horse in order to exploit people. And this story here pops up and understand that I'm not I didn't make the connection to the Catholic Church always that's always sitting back there. That gets over when you finally get over to England that starts to pop up. But this story, as I said, fairly perfects perfects the entirety of what I was talking about. I had seen back in two thousand regarding the abuse of, of uh, kids through uh, not goats, excuse me, the sons and daughters who are tear torn from their families and the destruction of the family underneath the the stalking horse of helping children and the system uh, that's underneath there to take advantage. Uh, but it says this story came out this weekend. Priest named in Pennsylvania clergy sex abuse probe jailed. And the point about this wasn't even the story. I don't really care about the stories no more. It's what are the facts underneath it. And are we look, again, does it qualify what I told you before? And here we have many years later now, maybe up to 10, when I told you this was going to be a problem. Over there, uh, they have uh, found that Hundreds of, uh, where did I read some of this stuff? Uh, John, uh, why don't we read his name? This guy, 76 years old, received 11 months in jail, five years of state prison time, where he'd be, have to register as a sex offender. Uh, for uh, Through the Roman Catholic Church, his priest on Friday became the first person sentenced to prison as a result of a Pennsylvania grand jury investigation that found hundreds of clergy and abused children over seven decades. So me coming in the 2000s and notice this in the, in the in the secular system was way late, right? So this is how they do this. And uh, but here it is, it, uh, the first person to be sentenced. How long it takes for these things to pop out is why I try to tell you: look at the condition, identify the condition, stop thinking what you think it is, look at what you're actually seeing, and start extrapolating what that would mean, notwithstanding what you think. So I just want to point this out. I think I'm my position on this in this Pennsylvania. This is not the only place. Remember, I said this is my observation for Pennsylvania was based on child services, court system abuse generally. This is global, folks. I just tell you, and you've seen this come out since then. And so again, I think I'm I'm um, I'm in a way closed on this point. This was exactly what went on. It went. It goes into systemic abuse. Everything you think is an authority and care and hope and all this peace on earth, it's a setup for a takedown. And I haven't really seen many places that uh, that will counter this and be the place we need to be. So we're going to have. The point is, we have to make that. We have to see this harm. We have to be a lot more diligent against how it works. It's it's un, unseemly. It's something that we really need. You know, it's not something that we like to look at. But it is something in the world. And until we start clearing this up, these are, there's just I can't see how we keep this festering, how it allows us to move on. And we do have these so-called revolutions, the historic wheel rotating on itself to repeat itself. But really, that's just... On our lack of ability to stop it or even comprehend enough to 
know to go stop it. So well, I guess we'll stop right there. The Pennsylvania story started out with a judge, a youth judge. And I say youth in a particular thing. That's a legal term. And that, as anybody who's listened to me heard me talk about that. Heard and heard to explain how I came to the point about knowing about the child services and courts problem with the study and research I did that I was making a documentary that it looks like after all these years, I'm very lucky to be alive to talk about any of it, anything. But that they fairly well allow, caused me to fail. I could not perfect that as well either. I'm just a witness to it, and I don't have the proof anymore because they worked out how to take care of that. I say they because I don't know how that all came down. I just know that I, my whole life changed when someone found out I was doing this expose uh, in a video format, doing a video documentary, and was going to out it all. And so this is a not a game. Uh, and these people are pretty well wired in lots of places. And this is not the only uh, offense, abuse going on. We talk about this abuses on the surface. I've also explained these things. Be careful when the system, the secular system, comes out to point to child molesters and child pornography and all that thing. And they don't. And you've never ever really heard of anybody in the secular system that's an official ever get nailed too bad. I've heard a couple of them, but not very many at all. And the reason is because it's a protective system, and it takes years and years and years to to work it all out. And the point was is it took people who cared to be, even if they were victimized, to be persistent to insist and you see uh, the history it's, it's really indicative of, indicative of what we're up against you see how many people who were suffered the harms had to come forward before anything would be moving forward and then you see how be careful going the other side the me too thing came up which I think all this stuff seems to be a psyop. If you, you know, at some point you got to say, well, you just think everything's just, everything's a paranoia. Well, think about it. You, you, you can think about it. You can put it this way. You can say it that way, and you can put your head back in the bucket of the be a, behind the woodshed bucket of Acme bucket of sand, or you can look at this. The Me Too thing now makes ev even a, a look at someone of a, a crime. And, and that's, a de that's the other problem that goes on. This is to cover the is systemic stuff. It makes people nuts. It, it, it causes them to think that they're the victims. They don't even have a clue. And they, don't, they certainly don't understand the underlying dynamic. That those that are in the system understand better than you, better than us, what is, not what ought to be. And how they function around what you think ought to be. So I'll move on here. Uh, again, the abuse to people, uh, the hardships that go on, the the false, uh, the, those that continue it, uh, they protected by this presumption of innocence, but the priests are protected by a system. I'm talking about a system of belief and religion that protects them as well, before you even get into the organizational stuff. To understand how, I guess to me, I'm looking at, I'm looking at systems I'm looking at methodologies that keep people from being responsive. My whole thing is we need to get responsive. So whatever's blocking us, I, I want to find it. I want to identify it. Even for myself. Even if it's not, no one else in the world wants to listen to me, I'm going to do it for myself. But I think some of you do want to listen. I do You do see the problems. You, you really have, you've had enough. And then we are walking through this problem where, again, the world that we've walked into, we didn't realize was such a setup that actually constrains how we uh, it, it controls what we do and how we th controls what we think how we think more importantly I suppose and then how we then that will affect how we respond and what we respond to and, and so here we have just an example Pennsylvania isn't the only spot you saw the world blow up over this pedogate stuff that is that was just a cover as well. Because remember, all this stuff comes out, but it's still running in the system, isn't it? Nothing stops, because we're not stopping. We're being abused at every level. Another story I want to come on, I, this is not really the focus of the broadcast today. I want to point out, as I said, I entered into the broadcast saying, you're gonna, there's things functioning today. You think you know the history, the dynamics of this, and it's over there, it's out there somewhere else. No, no, there's a condition here that just came up in the, just a little story comes in the news, the notice to us. That inside the notice was something else, and I want to talk about that. But right now I want to get into something, uh, because we've talked about, I've talked about it before, essentially, 
And uh, here, as I put in, uh, I think, a Twitter link, and these are old friends to us uh, on this broadcast. I talked in July, I think, about the phthalates problem, and uh, some of you found favor in that uh, in that broadcast. So, for whatever reason, I hope it was inspirational to understand and maybe move through that, at least keep an awareness of this. Well, this story comes up, another news article, a uh, new notice to us. Uh, the old friends are back here, folks, and uh, we talked about, remember, it's been, in a way, it was like an astonishing thing to finally hear that uh, your li your body can be changed in real time due to your environment. And I don't mean just the air and the water and the birds. I'm talking about the chemical environment, your your biological environment, the response to it, to the uh, to the environment, and what comes into your area around you is physically able to change you genetically. And so here we have another problem. Maybe this is a PSA to y'all. On the tail of the July of, uh, broadcast, which I guess I can put a link in the in the broadcast for that if you were interested to go back. We find out now a story. It says a notice to how shampoo to study that was done. How shampoo, toothpaste, and soap may be linked to early puberty. Per puberty. When you re you think about that, you think this is all oh, the, the girls and boys that are just have brushing their teeth. This happens to be looking at the mothers before their babies were born. The babies have an altered, a quickened uh, pubescence. So, I mean, I, I can, we can talk about all this. The point is we've got things in the world that have been allowed to be in our stuff that causes these changes. I guess we could go on talking, surmise and conjecture about why someone would want to do that and allow it and continue and all these years pass before it pops up. Uh, but here's a study. Uh, many parents already worry about chemicals in the personal care products that their kids use, their little goats use. Uh, but now a new uh, study takes the fear to the next level. The exposure starts even before a child is born. You know, again, I, I just want to interject. Uh, maybe I may stop interjecting, but I want to remind you always, when I'm reading this, i got a whole other vocabulary working in my eyes. I see the word, like I say, the word kids. I see the word uh, parents. I see the word child. You're dealing in a description that the author may or may not even understand. They have put, brought you all in and themselves into, and it's a view, purview through a legalism. And without getting too deep in loss, because, again, I, we can talk about tons of this stuff, these parent, child, personal, the word personal, kids, these are all subversions of what, of, of the law, if you will, of men and women and natural things. And so I've talked about it before. But so when I'm reading this, while I'm talking to you about one thing, my mind's looking at the, at the what they're really telling you. It's kind of like the they live glasses. And as I'm tell, as I'm telling you what you're going to see on the on the what they want us to see, which is serious, on the story, I've got a whole other thing in my mind going because I got the glasses I'm wearing and I'm reading the dec the decoders running. And I'm hoping at some point in the future, lots of you will see this, and you'll just take note of how that works. They just that you don't they don't have to promote it to anybody. Just start understanding. You're, you're, there's a whole lot to see in, in in this thing we call society. That all these notices are much deeper than than what we're actually reading. And some of this is really beyond us. Some people like I don't even know if the author understands what the vocabulary Eve's even saying that they're using. But uh, the story I want you to know about at this point. Uh, is that uh, we can now uh, we can now have a study we now have a study of these phthalates and these other other things the phenols and all we talked about I talked about all this uh, is now being shown to have a, a pre-birth effect through the mother it, two babies on a pubescence uh, a timing the girls exposed to the chemicals commonly found in shampoo toothpaste and soap may hit puberty earlier even if their only exposure is through the products their moms used while uh, they were pregnant according to a new longitudinal study led by research of the UC Berkeley. Now, so, uh, that's enough. Folks, be aware. This is what's going on. This is what's allowed. This is how many years of understanding this. Uh, again, even if I just told you in July they found a problem, we're now seeing another problem. It's half a year has gone by, and we haven't heard any real action against this. So, until one of you all, or hopefully a group of you, understand what you're up against, and go after something like that. Start bringing this together and making this an issue. We're going to have uh, we're going to have societies that are younger and younger 
becoming pubescent, and then that ties it. Actually, I didn't think about it, but it just because I don't think in this way, I guess, but it now affected me here to say, and that ties into the story before the abuse of kids, didn't it? See, there's a oh, you almost see a plan going on. I can't prove that, but it's just I just can't can't not think about that potential. See, it's a potential, isn't it? And why do they do that? And where is this precautionary problem? Where are the people now that they know? You, you, you now have to pick that up because no one else is going to. Anybody who cares. Uh, there's a story, and I get to the right to Oxford. There's a, here's the report uh, off of their human reproduction, uh, human, the animal reproduction here. Association of phthalates, parabens, and phenols found in personal care products were per, uh, pubert pubertal timing in girls and boys. So, you think that's partly why we have a bunch of confusion in people as well? That's how fast it's causing us to try and become more of an adult before our maybe met, we're mentally done, but then we're all confused. We don't know what that epigenetic change is doing through this, right through the mother. Again, we never think of the consequences more than, if I can be as, as, as harsh to say that for what, you know, your personal hygiene in, oh, this smells right. Oh, this, this is good smelling. This is, oh, this makes my teeth brighter. Maybe, maybe go to something new now. Maybe go to, you know, look, look at the basics, uh, like baking soda. I mean, there's lots of alternatives. So, anyway, another, another thing I report, I reported on the, uh, phthalates problem. This is a different nuance. You may want to go back. I'll put a link into the last July broadcast. This is a building problem. And until someone actually steps up and grabs this uh, this demon by the horns and, and does something, I don't know that it stops. And I don't know what else to say more about that. Uh, moving along this line, and I'll be moving from uh, this is a health stuff into where I wanted to go about your life is con constrained in ways you don't understand you wonder why the government doesn't work for you. Well, and then I'm going to show you how that's not the government working at all. They've already bought into the, the system of destruction. Uh, and I bring this to you. Uh, you know, I did a broadcast on the bombshell explosive titling of get you more involved uh, to try and get clickbait. I don't like all that. I don't like this uh, this source for that. Uh, but uh, anyway, here's, a, here's where I got the story. I don't have a lot of time to go track all this down. Uh, but it says bombshell study shows aspartame depletes neurotransmitters in the brain makes brains vulnerable to chemical damages from food and vaccines. And what did I say before that they've had in the system and things that have been allowed? Uh oh, this was, first of all, uh, aspartame is, they told us when they're uh, no different than uh, what we, you find in uh, milk and bananas, remember? Banana, milk and bananas, they told us, if I remember a tweet I put out. But milk and bananas. Well, this is actually the byproduct of a genetically modified uh, fecal uh, organism called E. coli, and that's what the aspartame byproduct of that organism is. This has been a problem. This aspartame, anybody who's studied it and understands the problem. Well, here's now it depletes the neurotransmitters in the brain. Now you can think about anything that's depleting that signaling is going to be a, a less functioning, less highly functioning uh, individual. Uh, no matter whether you're an animal or a man or a woman or the baby of a man or a woman, uh, but here we have. The point on the title that makes you vulnerable to chemical damages and food to vaccines. I told you, let's remind you of the, remember, the uh, dragonfly that had to be genetically modified to be receptive to the technocratic digital age, to receive the things that were coming in order to be responsive. They would move through you. The dragonfly was helpless, and you would just be programmed by to receive that dragonfly had to be modified to receive it, and once you were, you were helpless to the technology that attached to you. Now, we always think about this attachment. Remember, these radio waves, they're telling us these radio waves program you from a distance. And so here we have the, the aspartame. And we, we also find that if you do the study, the aspartame, and I never understood this because at the time it became, it became a, a, a thing, I noticed even guys were, were doing this because they wanted to lose weight. It was supposed to be something to lose weight. And I noticed everyone who took, took this stuff, they all blew up like balloons. They all got swelled up. And they're finding out now that it has nothing to do with the, no weight. And then obviously it, it, it poisons your system, so your body responds by it starts storing more liquids, more, li more water, 
and, and blowing, and you're just your body is responding to the to the to the, to the to toxin. That was no, you could see that a long time ago. But those that needed to lose weight, they could, they were more interested in losing the weight. This is how they feed into our our needs, if you will. But here we have a, a vulnerable chemical damages in food and vaccines. Well. This is all the chemistry we now see that epigenetically can change you. And I'm tying together the dragonfly to show you that they're coming with technology to make it, uh, you think it's going to be really good, that makes you receptive to these things. Then I also uh, explain to you, th this looks like binary and trinary weaponry. And so your body, through these chemistries that are made, and they're all made, they're all novel, are in the food system, it's supposed to be food secure? Yeah, I don't think so. I told you that before. This is all, in, in, in when we start to finally figure it out, it's all set up, and you can see it kind of culminating someplace, and it's in a not good place, if nothing else, without getting too wild. You're being predisposed to, to damage, and you're being diminished. Remember, your neurotransmitter, your, 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 your nerves are being diminished. We talked about that last week. So enough said on that. Again, I could talk and talk and talk, I suppose. A lot of you know some of this. And, but here's another piece of evidence that the government will allow upon you things. They will claim that there's no harm. We see years later that it is. And we also see, more importantly, go look through what it's doing and start extrapolating out what that might do to a people in society. And I think you can see the future they want, which is a technocratically connected, uh, synthetic, uh, 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 augmented reality. And they have you focused on, uh, on on the legalisms that are bringing that in, and you don't even know how to fight those. If you can't fight those, you're not going to see them in yourself. In fact, the, the demon in you that's recreated by this, you, it blocks your ability to see. And I don't, you know, we talk about aspartame here. You might as well just go back through anything that was biologically created and or augmented and you're going to find some kind of a problem likely very very few things i've seen are as anybody interested to really focus in on the problems and you see the system is set up to not want to look at them and i say you better learn how to attack that and you to break o open that seal they put around their ability to violate people everybody so we have a study here, impact of aspartame consumption on neurotransmitters in a rat brain. Don't underestimate the rat. As I talked to you about the fact that they use the rats hooked up to so-called humans. And they say, oh, look at the human just caused the rat to make the tail move. And I'm telling you that rat just told that guy to make the tail move so it didn't embarrass the rat. So this mechanism manipulation of us is pretty rote for the system of things. We're prepared, before we get there, to be receptive, even if it wasn't as outlandish as a technocratic synth neurosynthetic connection. I've told you they can do it with frequencies. They're doing it now, I suppose. You've watched, you can see the patents relative to displays, digital displays being able to make different frequencies come at you, which I tell you is in the beat. Some indifference frequencies is what they're using to control whatever is in your eyes. It gets the signaling that they do for your eyes. Uh, and they have that, un a lot of it understood. I don't know about it knowing the whole thing of it, but they have all that understood. They're already doing it. Uh, part like I told you, why I re didn't want to get, for a long time I resisted any kind of uh, digital display. It's not easy to do the CRTs that way. It's, it's, it's simple stuff on the digital. But at any rate, the, they prepare us to receive what's coming, the, the binary weapon. And uh, we've talked about the the problem of you know us plugging in or allowing things, and then I I bring in the specter of the idea. This is we're talking like it's just happening to us. And I told you no, this has been. There's lots of levels of different things that have been happening to us for a long time, not even just the last 70 years, even before. And I'll talk to them. Jen, you'll hear me talk about them in, in relative to any subject matter you see in the news. Like in the Twitter, a lot of, I think it was last week, a lot of, a lot of things came up. I could point people to the Title 42 USC 1981, your civil rights as, as being an exaction of every kind, a wrongful extortion on everyone equally. People don't see this. People don't get it. They, I, I think they actually think I'm a nut, but that doesn't matter. I mean, some people that see it see it, and they, they don't, but it just, it like bounces off of people. 
You, you don't know. First of all, you can't believe it. Then you don't put it into practice. Think, what does that mean? We never really get to the close to what are we going to do about it. But here in this little story here about being prepared and the environment we've been brought into that's controlled us. Well, it's an interesting little story. H uh, about H, uh, and and I always kind of kind of laugh a little bit at how it, how this stuff comes to me coming from traffic HOV lanes like uh, what is an HO what is this uh, specialty lane they put on the road why would that invoke anything well if you're paying attention you'll see the HOV lane discounts and you'll see I'm tying it into last week's and the weeks before and the Chinese problem and the social credit and the plugging you in for benefits. And all this stuff starts to come together. But it's been around for like forever. HOV V lane dis discounts to be replaced with customer rewards spying program. Corporations will go to incredible lengths to dream up new ways to convince the public to accept government spying. Now, I don't want to get too deep, but when you see that statement, that's even not quite correct. This is governments, uh, this is not the corporations doing that. They're just working on a profit motive. And this is not really the profit when you talk about an HOV lane with customer credits, when you're talking about really the use of the highways, if people knew about their highways. So without getting off trying to un, undo the, all that, uh, the point is you're going to be taken advantage of. Now, the front end of that public-private partnership is a corporation. Or some NGO, or some uh, special special type of cor um, institution that's created. And so, if you're going to engage in that, or be forced to engage to it, the, you're subject to all all that they're going to do or ne require you to do. If you have no better word in your mouth on how that's a violation to you. But going on to the story now, because I want to get to the point here this this today. <laughs> so much to talk about. The Arlington, Texas Department of Transportation, DOT. And they capitalize this as all, I guess, I don't know how I'm going to do this. As I tell you, I read a whole different language when I'm reading this that kicks in other factors and authorities that you may or may not get when you read it. When I see DOT, that's federal. I just, so I need to point that out at least for here because it's going to come back to us. The, te the State Department of Transportation, DOT, is federal. And you understand, you can understand the lineage of that without getting too complicated. That the commerce is what the federal government regulates exclusive to the Constitution. The states don't have that. And so any any regulation by a state has to be in conformity with the federal. So if you, you can even call it a state program, but it's going to have to impose the federal guidelines and the federal impositions or the federal conditions on a grant or whatever up front. This is not even a, not even a question. So we're already talking, we're talking state, don't be confused, it's actually federal, DOT. In this article, they identify the Arlington, Texas Department of Transportation as the DOT. Department of Transportation is under Title 49, it's federal. It deals in commerce, commerce amongst states. And so this gives you also a, a line on what they're actually talking about. And we'll just, we'll just give it a word so that it's not confused and get everyone all riled up here. It's called commerce. It's called commerce. That's all they're regulating. And so that should set up a whole other set of thoughts about why am I even involved here, but you are. The Texas DOT is getting rid of HOV lane discounts and replacing them with customer rewards. Motorists are being forced to download an intrusive new VeriRide app that takes government snooping to a whole new level. A recent article in the Dallas News uh, titled HOV Rewards to Replace Discounts for Dallas-Fort Worth Told Lanes is basically a rewards program for government spying. How is this rewards program for government spying? The article claims that the Council of Governments plans to spend $24 million to replace HOV discounts with a reward program. The new reward program will eliminate that upfront discount. Instead, Drivers will receive the same savings in the form of an e-credit, visa prepaid cards, cash, or direct deposit. This article, this author responds, uh, or goes on to say, where have I heard this before? You heard it behind the woodshed last week. I talked about the Hertz Facial Recognition Rewards Program, isn't it? And the author here asks the pertinent question, who is the Council of Governments? 
So when I read that the Council of Governments was offering the HOV lane death count, I'm saying, who's the, who's the Council of Governments to even offer them? Who is this Council of Governments? And this article will go through and their links and talk about it. And uh, this is a, an important uh, thing that people need to understand. And this is not just for transportation. Who is this Council of Governments? Uh, we, I guess I can continue to read the, the fast track here on this article because we'll go to that anyway. The Council of Governments, according to Wikipedia, quote, are regional governing and or coordinating bodies that exist throughout the United States. COGS is what they're called when you talk about them. COGS, C-O-Gs, are normally controlled by their member local governments. Now, I'm going to end this, this thing here. You can t get the article later. They refer to Wiki. I'll go there just to get the quick on it. The point is that they're regional. This is not your local jurisdictions. This is regional, and your local government is bought into being partner with this. It's a private entity that's been around for as long, more, uh, longer than I think most all my listeners. You may not have ever heard of them. Those that you have, then I'm not going to tell you anything new here, except if you've known this, why haven't you stepped up to stop, help stop them? Because this is the implementer of all things sustainable. And this happened a long time ago as they started to figure this thing out against us. And so understanding this foe and understanding how they did this is to understand the, one, of the, one of the enemies against us that works local to you. Talks about your and here's your toll speeds, your transportation that interferes with the underlying grants of the highway that they claim are now all in commerce that none of you know how to argue apparently. None of you know of even to try and bring forward to show it's a violation of the obligation of the state to protect your right not to travel to the use of the roads is granted by Congress under your road law, your road, your road existence law. Your highway existence law, not the Highway M Motor Vehicle Code, which defines the highway as a place of the matter of travel as a matter of right. No, you go to where that that thing, where is that matter of right created? It's in land law. But going here, this is the Council of Governments. Remember, I've told you to bring up another concept: consensus and or alternative dispute resolution is all worked through public-private partnerships. And it's where the government can pass off through a private organization, giving even an unstated monopoly on the control of funds to control you. And where I learned about COGS was back in the 80s. And I was a budget committee, I ended up being, because I had a pencil and a calculator, because I thought it was, I thought they actually did something. I walked into the budget committee, became a member, they made me the chairman because I had a pencil and a calculator in my pocket. Well, I took it serious, and I found out inside the budgets on my own, before I even got understanding anything like I can tell you about today, I found some pretty, well, interesting anomalies. And they were actually anomalies. They were actually covert conditions and accounts made. And not being knowledgeable about that at all, I was able just to look at certain things and identify certain things. It gave me an insight about budgeting in towns and how people in towns are stealing money from you all. Uh, and then we had the other side of that is what's about grants that the county would be getting or the city would be getting, and uh, what were those grants and how were we, again, doing the budgeting, looking at the budgeting? How, how do you how do you run a how do you run this this thing? And I wasn't ever in any ob observation of the CAFR. You only have so much money. You run it like a you know you run it like any check account. You can only have so much. You better not overdraft, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's going to be penalties if you do. But what about these grants? And then I looked at the grants, and I looked at what they offered, and they only offer you like three quarters. So they take a, a the biggest portion of the investment on a grant, but, uh, but and they make you invest, which you would think, well, okay, i got to put something in. Well, it, that's not why it's done. Uh, but the, where this where an organization has to, a governmental organization has to go to get money for projects it may be as simple as sidewalks, because I lived in towns that were so small they didn't have sidewalks, which I thought was cool. But they always have a reason to come in and say, well, you need sidewalks, you need curbs, you need drainage, you need this, you need that. Remember, this is all transportation as well. 
that I found out that but if you did not go through the existing state established system through these cogs, you did not advance your town at all. Your city would not advance. You would not get these loans. You would not do anything. Then I looked behind the scenes of that, and I said, well, what are they pushing? And I noticed then, though I didn't fully understand it, like I certainly do now, that they're pushing a plan that has been established at the state level, which is actually a federal plan. And I saw that at that time, before I even understood what I was looking at. I said, there's something wrong here. They're subverting our local control. In fact, you have no control. Because a grant comes with it, the obligation of doing the bidding and the, the need and the object object of the grantor. And although they said these were state funds, they were actually federal grants. And so this is a point I'm trying to explain to you about. You really got to look closely at what's going on local to you. The cog is the, is the cog in their gear system. And if you don't use that cog, you don't get anything. And the, one of the objects was, I figured out, you just decide, that you just have to decide you're going to do without. It's, again, you don't take the benefit. Now, a lot of people can't put up with that. I, I tend to be able to do it pretty well. But as a city, they can't look at that stuff. And then I also realized that the internal, the internal corruption also was being fueled by that. And so I realized sitting in the budget committee, and all, we weren't really making any decisions. We were just laying out the budget, what was needed, where it needed to go, what we could do, accounts we needed to maintain, accounts we didn't we didn't need. That's where I found the power, because I could identify our in, in, incompatibilities with these accounts. But the harder one was to say, okay, well, what about these grant streams that are coming in that we have to go and ask literally um, hat in hand to these cogs that will dictate these programs. This comes up again today. I'm finding out about these cogs back in the 80s, early 80s, and here it comes, they're still in force and effect, which you would, now that I understand what's going on, and they tell us now about the governmental buy-in. Your local governments are subverted by this private, essentially private organization. It's a council. What do I talk to you about councils? Councils, if you go to federal law, those are advisory councils to a federal agency. Well, what did I just say before? This is Title 49, the Department of Transportation. And when we look through these links that I'll give you, if you, again, I can only hope you're interested, this will get you on the path of one of the players that is subverting you locally. And when you see a story in the paper about this credit system coming down, digital credits being run through this program that a COG controls, where'd they get $24 million to do this? If you've never heard of them, you've got to kind of think, well, where'd they get any of this money? Who are these things, this council? And so this was something I found very important. It pops up. It went by. I'm sure it went. No one understands what's going on with this. No one sees the control. This author starts to see some connections. But it can't end where the connections that this author makes is. You have to go in deeper to start looking around. And uh, I can't go to any one spot. So I said, what is this Council of Governments? Let's type in Council of Governments and see what pops up. I don't really care uh, where I'm going to go. To my knowledge now, it doesn't matter. You're going to find the same story. It's the mold for how they destroy your town and bring it subject to federal authority. And then, because that's not the end, and then to what? To the implementation of sustainable development. Under what guidance for transportation? Climate change. Now you all may throw, roll your eyes and this and that and made up your decisions. I'm, I'm saying that they're utilizing these things as tools of destruction, not a subject matter to roll your eyes over. And there is a position that needs to be taken uh, if you want to stop the encroachment and the defeat of your property rights, and that's down to even your, if I can say it this way, your public private, pop, your public property rights, like the grant of the use of the highway to you. Because transportation is a veneer of authority that's not what you do unless you're in commerce. And I've already explained to you that production has rights and I think you might find them lots spelled out in lots of constitutions across the country. 
production has rights of the use of the highway to market. It's not the commerce market. It's the market that you get to sell your stuff when you're a producer. They've con convoluted that observation. Once the, once the producer offloads to a market, it then goes into commerce. And becomes those entities become regulated by that. And I don't know that there's but maybe one or two people in this country that understand this. And if you're some one or two people beyond that, well, I'd sure like to hear about you because where are you? How come you're so quiet that we've allowed ourselves to do this? The only people I know that know about this, I'm working with. And until we come to this idea uh, about the separation between production, your life on the land, versus the commerce value added and that veneer of control, we're going to miss this. And until your local governments get their obli understand the obligation to protect the production and those underlying uh, rights, uh, the grants, which are in the statutes to do. This is not like an opinion you bring. You bring the, you bring the code that says so. We're going to see a, a failure in this country. And the, these people are going to exploit the condition and impose a federal authority notwithstanding the Tenth Amendment. Why? Because they get the consent of the local government as a party to this group. And those people are ignorant as a dumber and rocks, a box of rocks, and they think they're doing a great warm and fuzzy for everybody. And they're not. They're bringing on an agenda. They're bringing on the agenda for all the reasons that uh, you hear Trump saying he didn't agree with. That, that's still working right through here. So I look up, what's a council of governments? Let's go through a wiki real quick, because I want to point out some things. Council of governments, also known as regional councils, regional commissions, regional planning commissions, and planning districts, are regional governing and or coordinating bodies that exist throughout the United States. Did you know that, folks? That these this council of governments has governing authority? And if you didn't know that, then you have to ask, what did my government, the actual legitimate government, what happened to that? Yeah, you'd have make a good question right there. This is it right here. This is the problem right there. You don't know the system you've been brought into and lived through that is actually governing this place. And the system is up around that that protects it. And they work and prey upon your fallen nature. Not you, necessarily, because you'll never be in this condition. Only those that will be, they'll prey on the fallen nature of those people to believe that they're doing uh, the, the good of the people to implement the things that we see coming down through that are decades-old plans. Regional. I told you, anything regional is a problem. You see the word everywhere, but it's tied to this. And they want to make you think that's normal. They want to make you, talk, you stop using the word countryside, country, the people, the land. They want to talk about municipalities, metros, urban areas. They want to talk about rural. They want to talk about regions. You don't want to hear about watersheds, though. But we hear landscapes. If you get what I'm saying here and intermixing some words, I hope you kept track of the distinctions. If you don't understand them, that you really have to start looking at what I've been saying because this is the key to understanding one of the keys on this ring of understanding how we're being destroyed. How, why this thing's going to go where it's going to go and, and, good, and be successful. You hear right, regional governing and coordinating bodies throughout the United States. What did I say before I even enter in? I don't care what I find in a cog throughout the country, United States of America. And I have a suspicion, although I have never I haven't really looked, you're going to find these councils all over the world in different uh, democracies. It's how this, uh, this subversion of the people's will actually gets done. And again, it's not the sole mechanism. So don't again, if you focus on this, we've got some other things to do otherwise. So somebody has to focus on this. The regioning, regional governing. Who's your governor, folks? You think it's someone in an office somewhere in a capital? No. It's this group who has local governments tapped into it, and they get what? They get the consent, then, of the governed through their representative, don't they? So now you're seeing how they subvert representative government. Regional governing. Who's your governor? 
cogs are normally controlled by their member, normally controlled. This loaded statement. Cogs are normally controlled by their member local governments, though some states have passed laws granting COGS region-wide powers over specific functions, and still other states mandate such councils. This is all before us, folks. This is all mandated or given region-wide powers. That means your state agrees to the region they cover. That subverts your counties right there. And powers is what you give some entity in order to function in authority. It's not a, just a suggestion. This is a power. Always look for the power. And this is a, this is a Wikipedia article. There's so much more behind this. That, I mean, this is the short form. That when you start to understand the, the infiltration, you'll start seeing one of the mechanisms that when you go down to your county your county commission meetings and you start yelling and screaming about a problem, you don't realize that plan's been said and done by one of these cogs and one of those commissioners, if not all of them, are, are already agreeable to it and they are just got to weather you. And part of your angle should have been to go down and disrupt the authority of these cogs which may have to now, you now see, may be a statewide thing that's already agreed as a subversion to the state. Why do I say subversion? Because when you see the subject matter that they deal in, you can't come, I could not come to any other conclusion. When you understand what they're doing is not really in the law, they've made it look like the law, and what they're doing is destroying through uh, certain mechanisms of fundamental rights under the color of authority. And you look at it through my eyes, and I tell you it's the felonies I keep telling you, and this amounts to the war on, of the, against the laws of the United States, which is actually treason. Then you start to see the real ramifications of this. Whether or not you appreciate that, or want to respond to it, or roll your eyes to it, I don't know. I can just tell you, if you don't like something going on around your town, and it's kind of a public service, this is the mechanism that's happening. So you can go and turn beet red at a meeting, and start screaming at your commissioner, who, as I said, may be as dumb as a box of rocks compared, or not even as smart as a box of rocks. At least rocks have a place that they function correctly. They, that you're speaking, you're as being as dumb as, as who you're looking at. Who may not be so, who is going to be smart, folks. Remember, that's they're, they're smart. You're not intelligent, but they're smart. And until you get all this understood, you won't understand how this thing is being pushed through, at least in part. Uh, the, through the states, the, the states have passed the granting of this. Again, grant powers. The serious opening statement on what a council of governments does. COG members are drawn from the county, city, and other governmental bodies within its area. COGs can offer planning, coordination, and technical assistance to their members administer programs at regional level and act as intermediaries between the local government member and the state or federal government. Intermediaries on a regional level. And do you think that their regional administered plans are going to be less than federal government cognizant? You just heard right there that's the last thing in the list and the authority of what they're speaking to. They're intermediaries. But they're a council. And we already know, administratively, that council's subservient to a federal agency. Isn't it? Well, if you don't know that, if I say isn't it, you don't know, you need to go read about advisory councils. And as I say that, see, so much goes through my mind. Hold out. Don't go thinking about it, but just hold out. We also have the district, the military district that functions on this level as well as another thing that you could consider. A typical council, a typical council. So normally they have this. What about the abnormal cog? <laughs> the typical council is defined to serve an area of several counties. So again, they've destroyed your county government. If what you need to get done in advancement of uh, infrastructure is going to be solely through that cog. 
you're not going to get the type of service, if you will, that's going to be conducive to local control. It's been subverted, and they've used the Tenth Amendment against you. And I see so many people going down and yelling. They'll yell at the problem being wrong, and then when that doesn't happen, they'll yell at the commissioner, one of them, that doesn't quite hold the right attitude, or they'll get frustrated because they're not, no one's listening to them. And they'll throw their hands up because their vote doesn't make any, any sense. doesn't work anymore. And there's a whole dynamic behind all that as well. But they'll never focus on the underlying mecha infrastructure that's been there from before us. Folks. It's been here for a while. The COGS can offer planning, coordination, and technical assistance. How do they do that? They do it on the money that comes in, that they're getting passed through money to do the programs that they implement, which are federal, aren't they? So that's the technical advice they're going to give. What are they going to do? The best science? They're going to do it all on the standard that they've established at the federal level through an agency? A typical council defined a service uh, to serve an area of several counties and addresses issues on such as regional and municipal planning, economic and community development, pollution control, transit administration, transportation planning, human services, and water use. You think that about covers the police powers of the federal government pretty well, folks? What is these federal policies going to do municipal planning for? I've said that they have Tenth Amendment commerce rights, uh, constitutional rights for doing transportation, so that's almost a natural. That means, though, that it's federal, doesn't it? Councils of governments also play a role in regional hazard mitigation and emergency planning and in the collection of analysis and distribution of demographic and cartographic GIS data. It's pretty encompassing, don't you think, that they have their fingers in the in the controls of the, the strings on the marionette of your local government? JIS data, that's a my colleague is one of the one of the guys who was was in college at the time as a university student who was commissioned to be one of the people who set up the the math regarding this whole system in order to establish the the what he thought was a watershed <laughs> ends up being this system his speaking about watersheds and showing how man in the generic term man is contributory with nature to providing production this was subverted by this system as i say to find this guy uh, 10 years ago or 11 it was a, was really a miracle. When I heard what he had to say, I said, well, this is what they've done to it, as I've told you before. So they do the collection, analysis, and distribution of demographics. Isn't that just the method of the subversion where they monitor what's going on? They do an analysis of that, that information, and then they come up with a plan uh, about how to deal with the problems in the, against the implementation of their plan. The plan, I've told you, is your problem. Look again, the, the, you think economic support is coming from the state or from lo, some local club or whatever? No. Uh, from a state program? No. This is coming from this council of governments. It's all funneling through this. Federal transportation is in this next list uh, to show you how important this connection is to your communities. COGS may either be a distinct from or encompass regional metropolitan planning organizations and rural transportation planning organizations, uh, MPOs are multi-governmental urban transportation planning entities that arose, and here we start seeing the lineage, that arose out of the requirements, the imposition now, of the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1962. So they've been around since at least 1962. They're implementing federal law. And they encompass all those things that we just read in this little bitty group you may or may not ever have heard about. That, as I've just explained to you, just this simple wiki is controlling your government by themselves. They have people in there. And this method of, of control is systemic across the nation, not just to COGS, 
But now we move it up till today, we see Clint Richardson's Corporation Nation. We see the CAFR information. And we see we can tie all this stuff into how that's been put together uh, since the time of the establishment of a cog. So they were created. We haven't got there yet. They were created, and then they implement the federal aid to highway. How? How did anybody know this was coming down, folks? Is this just haphazard? No, this was all planned. You see these words are there. I told you, urban, rural, transportation. All these things are there. Metropolitan, municipal, it's all there. Remember, and don't forget, there's a category of the term, county and municipal is federal. They want to make us believe that county and municipal is local. Those of you that are doing research either have found that or you will find that when you look close enough. So Federal Aid, Federal Aid Highway Act of 1962. I find this interesting because in 19, what's 56, Eisenhower wanted to know what was the, the key, the do, how does the, the, the domain, the federal domain get defined in the, the, the two volume book I've told you that I had a copy of, a friend of mine had, so I read it. The two Bible looking volumes. It forms the basis for how I understand the, the state federal relationship on land. There's four categories. Then you go through and you understand what the core categories are. You understand how a lot of this pulls together. Uh, in 1956, the, it was also the a the I think the uh, year that they did the hi, Federal Military Highway Act. I think is that the same year when they found out what they could do and what it was all about. And this comes right after that. So you put these in chronology, they start to make a little bit of sense that this is a ongoing a, uh, an ongoing plan to further an, uh, uh, some object. I wanted to say. A, an agenda, but I understand when you deal with the military and you're someone's trying to protect your nation and you, then they have certain needs to be looking at and things to fix. And so I got to be careful on saying, well, it's just an agenda. Everything, everything is an agenda, like it's all negative. There's objects the government is to fulfill, and a lot of times, I mean, sometimes they do it right, and a lot of times lately it seems like they're doing it all wrong because they went off the, the rails to implement things that uh, they figured out how to subvert the constitutional system and there's been nobody in the middle of it to to uh, check that uh, and as we found in our 2013 lawsuit uh, there's the inherent power of each branch is not being inherently in, invoked to check the other branches which is a requirement if you're going to have this kind of a system so a federal aid highway act of 1962 which made the federal financing for urban transportation projects contingent upon the existence of, quote, continuing comprehensive urban transportation planning process undertaken cooperatively by the state and local governments, close quote. But what if I talk to you about cooperatives? Collaborators? You're like collaborators and spies in war. I mean, this is this all that. This is all there. If you don't work at it, co they talk about coordination, but they're actually required to do it cooperatively. In other words, they have to get you to, to buy in. This is collaboration. This is cooperating agency. This is all administrative. So how did they take your, well, I won't even go, how did they take your agency in the state called a county, which you didn't realize, I suppose, uh, and get it to be a federal agency uh, that subject to the federal control? You're hearing it, the Council of Government. Long before anything I've been talking to in the past about these local things of sustainable development. This is all being put in the pipeline. I mean, I think about that. It's pretty astonishing, don't you think? This is all the, the, the so-called infrastructure being set up to go and implement the very plan they're doing that destroys us at, from the federal level, which was also kind of plan, a plan because we were destroyed as a nation of independent countries in federation in Lincoln's time. And don't you know, Lincoln was a lawyer. And this is how this other thing also keeps coming out. This is how this works. It's also what we sued in 2013. And I suppose, I keep saying it, when, when people finally figure out what we did in 2013 and understand how comprehensive it looked, it is, what we did, I think they may be aghast. But people aren't even coming up to the concepts that uh, we have tried to address in an injunction. And the what happened to that should be a telltale sign of everything as well. But in law, that's a default. 
The Bar Association didn't answer. The government, the state didn't answer. They couldn't. They were, they're all cr criminals. They're all committing treason against every one of you. They're doing it through one of these, through, this is one of the mechanisms, through the COGS. You, you look them up. They're going to be in your a location near you. And, again, I, you got to be careful. Like I said, that some places don't have sidewalks and there's another sidewalk. Because you, if you're not developed, it just means that that's, that doesn't mean that they're not there. It just means that, that hasn't been placed. There's not an importance in the future in the direction that that's going. Because that's, and so you're just going to be left out. And that might be fine. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm saying because you aren't in a developed part, you realize this says this is, this is urban planning and rural areas. It said rural transportation planning organizations. It's federal. Your, your locals have really no control. All they can, the only control they have is to say no. And, and then the way I understand it goes on, have a better plan. Which most people have no clue about. I mean, they're up against the expert transportation guy, aren't they? Or the organization that's been given the stakeholder that's been given the power through to to do the implementation. And we don't know how to address it. most most everybody doesn't know how to address any of it. And and I only marginally so because I think I know how to address it. But you're still up against that system that's so well and incestuously so uh, wrapped tight. Now, I say we could, it's not that I haven't been successful, because through my colleagues, we can defeat that. But it takes time. And you won't even understand, what, nobody understands what I'm talking about, that I just, what I just said there. Uh, they don't understand the time it takes, they understand what we've done in order to be able to defeat this very incestuous thing, even against the legal system. It can be done. So, uh, getting on, our TPOs are bodies similar to, uh, similar to and inspired by the MPOs, but organized for rural areas. The RTOPOs existed for decades. They were only formally recognized by, uh, by on a federal level by the Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century Act of 2012. You've heard that act come present behind the woodshed here. I think it was the beginning of this year. When I did a quick little check, because of the words that are being used, I was able to say, well, this pro program that they're talking is local is actually federal. And I went and found the DOT, uh, federal DOT, and sure enough, they're using the same language. Everyone's moving ahead for progress. Progressive. You know, Marxist, fascist, so socialist, it's anything but the republic that you didn't keep. So this is at the highest levels the most destructive, the biggest, the deepest stinking abyss. Anyway, going on, they tell you if you wanted to, right here on the wiki, a good place to start. Certainly not at all. Certainly won't necessarily help you in how to approach something. You still would need to look at some particulars of your locality. You'd have to look kind of do some intelligence gathering to find out who's involved, why they're involved, what's involved. Look beyond them to see who they're involved as partners outside. It takes a little bit of surveillance of your own. But once you got to have this all understood, then you find out what the core matter is that they want to do, you can take it out. And you have to, how you would take it out, if you didn't actually take it down, you would put up against it, its non-law plan, the commerce authority even, how it subverts your local, your local rights. And I mean talking about not you as a man or woman, I'm talking about in the land. Going on here, the history. And this is where, it, again, as I keep saying, Things have been before us. We've been born into an environment. But we have no clue about it. We take it for granted. The voluntary nonprofit regional organizations. So you get a mouthful here. Nonprofit now is a tax reference to some entity that doesn't pay taxes. But it's going to dictate now vast sums of money and grants and authorities from the federal programs. Nonprofit regional organization had existed for several decades. COGS, in their modern form, began in 1947 with the Atlanta Regional Metropolitan Planning Commission. 
Aren't these names fascinating? I said, be careful when you're talking metros, metropolitans, regional, planning commissions. They said it all before. Here it is. All in one name. Followed by the Northern Virginia Regional Planning Commission in December of the same year. 1947. What's important about this, folks? And I'm kind of slowing down a little bit. I was going to go a little quicker. But I guess I can't. Uh, 47 on the federal level was what? It was the year after 46, which is what? That was where the feds created their administrative agency system, isn't it? From where? After the packing of the uh, Supreme Court in 1937 by Roosevelt, which then brings in 38 this very condition. If you don't think we keep dropping back before any of us that's listening to me. And so what is important there is just to know the lineage of where we're coming from. And why I try to do that, too, is because there's just so much information that wants to point out one thing, one guy, this cause, that. The DEW started the fires. It's all a bunch of nonsense until you break it down on where this stuff comes from. You start putting up against it the counter facts that you need to disprove before you can go down any kind of a theory other than the, the simple stuff. And this happened to me on Twitter this last week. Really, dis I don't, I'm not going to talk about it. Just a, just a really big disappointment. But to, anyway, in people, just to, the way people are responding to this is we're not going to, I just keep asking the question anymore to anybody that might listen. We're not going to do this, are we? we? We will not settle down on the real boring stuff to figure out what it is. And boring stuff is killing us. The stuff that's already been in the system that you don't have to make stories of. No sensation, no blockbuster, no explosive, no nothing. It's simply what has gone on. And you can find it in the black and white, and you don't have to make an opinion about it. The, this thing has started right after the administrative agency started. Now, what does that make sense of that? Because that was how the, the administration works through councils. It, as the administration is the lead agency to the advisor inputter, or stakeholder. And then you find out this organization, the Council of Governments, has power to act. Do not underestimate power. That, that's the word I, I tend to, I don't focus on it and then drool over the fact of its existence. You look to see if power is involved. The word power is invested in something. You start from there. If you find power, you're dealing with something you better pay attention to. If, 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 okay, so that's up to you to decide uh, to, to research. But uh, I focus on who has the power. And if there's no power, then you have to take the second step of what's your purpose. And it's more than an ex executory type thing than it is a power thing. And if you look, corporations have power to do things. That's their existence. And that's the limit and the extent, too. And so it's a jurisdictional discussion where power exists. There were, there's the absence of power, you got the lack of authority, period. Lack of jurisdiction as well. There's nothing to rule over. But anyway, going on here. By 1950, there were 18 COG regional planning organizations in the United States. And by 1953, the number of such bodies had increased on 40. COGs say explosive growth during the 60s and 70s, driven by federal and state funding initiatives and mandates. Now, let's look at that state funding. What medium of exchange are they talking about? Does the state have its own coin it's actually throwing in here on this funding? No. This is all based on the federal system. So this is a little bit of a lie, but this is also showing you the channels of the taxation system running, uh, how they take money and bring it back, and they make it look like it's state. And it's all the same system. I'm pointing out here that something comes by a state plan through a local cog. You think it's state money. It's actually federal. You're going to have to do what the feds say. But like uh, some states, they made the Department of Environmental Quality. They made it the state's Department of Environmental Quality. When you look at how that was established, it was established for the other ones I've looked at simply to enforce the federal authority. So, in fact, the states have no Departments of Environmental Quality on their own authority. And that's kind of interesting for someone like myself in doing production because that means that their authority is only commerce. and does not extend to, pro to pro production. And we've killed them on every argument since when I figured that one out. 
theirs is a commerce authority. It doesn't matter if it's a state says so a state in front of it. It's just a name. Its function is to implement federal law, like COGS. So here we go. In 1960s and 70s, we were driven by federal funding. Okay, federal, 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 federal. You find a statute in every law that a state that I've looked. You use federal funding. You have to follow federal law and federal mandates, and certainly you have to follow the grant co contract agreements. You, you're no, you're, there's no state authority here at all. Let's just get rid of that. At present, the National Association of Regional Councils estimates that currently of the 39,000 local general purpose governments in the United States, counties, cities, townships, towns, villages, and boroughs, a total of more than 35,000 are served by COGS. You think you have a Tenth Amendment state right, folks? And, and then I always have to laugh, too. You think you folks on state rights, you think this is state's rights, you look at the first thing the states do anymore is take your guns, and you still want to say, I have state's rights. And I find it ir ironic the feds are coming back now to invalidate states' uh, laws against guns. Fascinating what we don't even pay attention to. But let's get back to the number. 39,000 general purpose governments. But who's doing the regional governing, folks? Cogs over what? At least 35,000 of those, if you think you have some local control. Well, if you think that, you need to research some of these things. And I guess I'm, I'm addressing a couple of things. First of all, what do you have to start focusing on in order to understand what the problem is that you want to address? And then those of you that would go down and rail against your county commissioners, who will tell you when they're being honest, and they've had that happen in the, local, in the locality that I'm in, a commissioner saying, I don't work for you. Yeah, boy, the Patriots get all red-faced on that one. She was telling her the tr telling him the truth, but but you know we gotta believe in our fairy tales about what's going on. So national and state organizations. I just want to show you again thirty-nine thousand, thirty-five thousand under Cogs, and I can tell you the ones that are just outliers to all those. They're being affected by this this uh, blanket, this wet blanket, right uh, federally, right under our noses. Several national organizations exist to serve the needs and lobby for the interests of regional COGS. Not your interests, not your local government's interests, the COGS interests. That's a federal lobby doing a federal purpose, isn't it? Put emphasis and place and time and purpose on these words. The COGS are federal instrumentalities of destruction who are lobbying to help them do their job better at the federal level, the very entity that allows them in the first place. When you get your head wrapped around that, step back, say, okay, that was fast. Now how do we do it? How do we do this? How do we really start to approach this? Uh, these include the National Association of Regional Councils, formerly the National Service to Regional Councils, the National Association of Development Organizations, the Association of Metropolitan Planning Organizations, similar voluntary associations also exist at the state level, such as the Texas Association of Regional Councils, the New York State Association of Regional Councils, and the California Association of Council of Governments. An alternative to the bottom-up model for state-level associations of COGS are regional state designated planning and development regions. R groups of COGS organized are mandated by state governments. It's not bad enough that this is sitting there. There's an even more insidious and deeper type of organization that will work for this outcome. Whatever their outcome of the COG would be, which is guided by the federal. I guess, no, I, well, I guess we'll get to that here now. I'm getting to the end of it. Uh, we've got all these lists of all these names. I said, I would. i got to sit here and read 39,000 before you get the idea. You'd be tuned away. You probably already turned away. So it's probably not even interesting to you. How boring is this? Folks, this is, the this is the tale of the destruction of your life. Since before 1947, but more formally since 1947. All consistent with an executive administrative imposition on this country. That I point out all the time to you all.
So let's go look at maybe just a cog here. What is it about us, cog and our region? Just any, I just picked one and went there. Pretty fascinating. It's all pretty much the same, but you see, they'll tell you exactly what's going on. And if you really understand what they're telling you, they re you'll realize how comprehensive their control of is. Whatever the word is they call region, they're controlling you. They're controlling the government you thought was yours. They're controlling how the money gets funded. And if you're a property owner, they're controlling how your money money's going to be stolen from you to do all this. And, and that's the local level. Then you got the federal taxation that comes through that everyone uh, pays or don't. It depends on how that works out. But metropolitan Washington is a diverse, oh, diversity, and dynamic, oh, we got to be an exciting region. Oh, that's not you. Remember, that's an association of local governments. That's a corporation also, not the body politic, which is a different type of corporation. It's not the body politic. I think we're missing some of these fundamental distinctions. So we start putting those into perspective and name them out, and we can start to show what was supposed to happen, and I can show you how it's not. And we at least begin to see what the real enemy is. Region, home. Home? The home of the brave, the free? Are you kidding me? Are you home? They've got a home here, folks. Well, I can also suggest to you that's a tax home. But guess what? It's non-profit. So we're still talking federal imposition on you. Right here, right in the first sentence. They're telling you exactly what these things are. For uh, To more than 5 million people, and one of the nation's largest economies. They're proud of what they're controlling. Right? This is like their this is their badge of what they've they'll claim they've done. Because without them it wouldn't have happened, right? More than a million new residents and jobs are forecast between now and twenty forty five. They're planning ahead, folks. They're the planning commission. You'll see how they do all these plans are required. You see the federal law is required to have these plans. That's why I say that's where you change stuff. You get in there and you show the plan they have is not really listening to the local rights or policies or laws. It's actually bringing on a foreign rights policies of laws. It's violative of what they're supposed to be doing. That's how you attack this. They're managing this growth, this COG. You thought your local government was managing it, didn't you? No, the COG is managing it and enhancing. What have I said about enhancement and modernization? These are the terms of the subversion. They want to make you sound like they're doing something for you. No, they're enhancing your environment to meet their outcome. Enhancing the region's quality of life. Not your life, not even your government, your, 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 de facto, your, your de facto de jure government, not even your what you thought was your government's right, but the region's quality of life. Now, do you think that it's their quality of life that they're looking at enhancing? Do you think that they're going to care about what you want? Well, only if you agree. And that's the ADR system, Alternative Dispute Resolution. You'll agree with us before you get to have a say. And if you say counter to what we say, we'll vilify you, we'll condemn you. So this region's quality of life. There's no quality of life for the watershed. No, this is an artificial entity that we find is federally a uh, veneer of federal authority requires partnership and enhancing the region's quality of life requires partnership if I could get you all to understand what they just said there you would understand what I do to destroy what they do did you, did you hear me folks if I could get you to understand what they just I just read you there of what they just said, you can destroy this like we can destroy it. The only problem is we don't have enough of us that know this condition. And you always look for those conditions. Let me read that again. Managing this growth and enhancing the region's quality of life requires partnership. What's the answer, folks? The answer to all of this. It speaks to collaboration, cooperation. It speaks to what they have to do in the term partnership. How do we stop this? We interfere with that partnership arrangement, don't we? This whole thing is moved on. This whole destruction, this whole use and utility of this weapon requires partnership. 
What have I talked to you for years about stakeholders and buy-in? And William Roberts was excellent to point this out in his way. He did it from the books. I did it from having to deal with the with the things on the ground. It all means the same to me. It doesn't matter. But what really matters was what are we doing? What are we what are we addressing? Requires partnerships. Oh, we're all in a big partnership. Public private our pub our partners our partners. It, all this destruction requires what? Requires your consent as a partner. The ring in your nose. I talked to you about. If we could kill this use and utility of partnerships, we destroy their ability to harm us. Requires partnerships. What did the Jefferson Mining District, uh, we, we organized up, established under the federal law for mining districts to do so under the, under the, the uh, mining grant called the United, United States General Mining Laws of the United States. And we uh, focus, if you get to Jefferson Mining District website, you'll see on the right-hand side. You'll read down the right-hand side. Look at what we're talking about there. Back in 2011, when I finally figured out for myself how this would work and what we would need, before I could articulate to others on what I think our focus would be to start, the subversion of this whole thing is to not engage in what? Collaboration. To, to do what? Not engage in cooperative agency. To do what? Not be an advisory council to a federal agency. To do what? Impose law that can't be done as an, a collaborator with, an, with a federal government. Or the state government, now you see. Was to do what, as we found objectively stated in the law, but in the FLIPMA, Federal Land Policy Management Act, that requires what? What's the other C word? Lots of C words in these people. It was coordination. And the, re the definition of coordination that they used in the wiki is incorrect. They use that more in the street language. The coordination mandated in the law for land management for the federal government is the work of governments as opposed to advisors. You destroy the partnership by invoking your law that is to be recognized by these agencies. How is it happening? Because I, by being a coordinator, I'm not a partnership. To be a coordinator, I am not in collaboration. To be a coordinator, I'm the Tenth Amendment foundational de jure government established under the Constitution that shall be regarded in its needs when facing federal Plans, projects, demonstrations. Where to get those words? Go read the NEPA, National Environmental Policy Act. I mean, I wish I could just understand that you understand what I'm saying. What I just pointed out to you requires partnerships. That isn't even all of it. Because that partnership is a big deal, too. But if you understood how simple this thing is to kill, this to use the weapon that they're using, they need you to buy in. They need your locale, lo locale or the local authorities to buy into what they got. Buy into what they got they're going to give you. And these cogs are one of the instruments of destruction that are been around forever for relative to my listeners in the age of us. This whole thing requires partnerships. That's right off of their COG website. What were some other things here that I, I read? Uh, COGs recognize local leaders for partnership and service. A little, uh, a little reward system for being that subversive collaborator for their partnership and service. In other words, they know how to reward their people to keep them staying in that system of subversion. This is, to me, preying upon your ego, your greed, your need of recognition, your nihilism, whatever the word you want to call it, the fallen nature, seems to me pretty clearly. They need this partnership. They need this partnership. They, they'll call it all kinds of names, too, so you won't see it name, uh, be a, a partnership. They'll call it teamwork. I've been through all of this before. This is really nothing new. I'm just packaging it on the subject of a HOV Lane article that popped up uh, here just a couple days ago. 
And one thing recognized to me, what does this cog have any power? If you come back to that question, have any power upon how to disseminate these rewards and change them, whatever they did? Whatever they did, I don't care about it. But they're even involved is an interesting thing, and the amount of money that's involved. I know maybe nothing compared to trillions, but for someone behind the woodshed, 24 million is quite a bit. And that's just the incentive program, remember. But they need these partners. This whole thing requires people to subvert their own power and stop being their power and be a collaborator, a cooperator, a collaborating agency, a cooperating agency, a team player, a partner. You see, hear this on the international scene. Our partners, we're talking Putin speaking to Trump, our partners. This is a global structure of subversion. And all it takes to kill is you stand up. So I tell you, you got to do something and assert what you have right to assert. And do not walk with the ring in your nose. They require you put the ring in, and they'll pull you along as long as you keep that ring in. They require you to partner with them. And you want to talk about voluntarism, this is what the definition of the active one in the world is today. This is not a myth. This is not a utopian idea. This is what they've done. They've taken those very concepts we all hold dear, and they've used them against us. What are they looking to do, these cogs? I'm just, I'll give all these links for you here. You can read through. Just, I just picked them and went down through this. It's not. I figured it's not going to come up with anything new. I just go from one to the next, and they'll tell us. So here we are, looking forward, region forward. These weird, weird terms as well as this. What do they do? Community. What is this community involved in? It's regionalism. Go look at all the UN Sustainable Development. Go look what anybody's ever talked about. Other, you'll find regionalism. All the great people who've done research that we may or may not be around still. I don't even know. Quiet or vocal, I don't even know. See, we don't even get together. I don't even know what to, I don't even hear these people. They, you've heard all this before, but I'm showing you that one of the organizations that's there to destroy you, and it's not what you think it is, and it's not as local as you think it is, and you're not going to go down to your local council uh, commissioners and yell and scream and blame them. No, they've got some blame, but it's not the kind of blame that uh, when you understand what's going on that, that, that needs to be placed on. You have a different action to take. As I said, the wrong action is just like you being cricket. You certainly aren't getting anywhere. Cogs region forward. Vision. New word. Same old words. Region forward. They always want to sound like they're doing something uh, what uh, good. You know, it's all sounding like it's in good shape. They have their vision. They didn't ask you anything about this, remember? This is their vision. This is the regional vision. Federal regional vision focuses on creating a more prosperous, accessible, livable, and sustainable metropolitan Washington. Wow, lots of adjectives. Well, why metropolitan Washington? Why not just Washington? Why not just Washington instead of sustainable Washington? When you go look at that word sustainable, you're now aware exactly what I've been telling you. You're back to the United States, the United Nations, allowing the United Nations to rule over the United States and implementing these plans. Since when? Since before we even heard about it. Implementing this stuff since the 40s. If you, if you think you can just walk it down and think you know what's wrong, uh, these guys are so far ahead of us, it's... Well, I don't even know what to say. They're just that far ahead of us. I don't even want to condemn, say in judgment, because we're all sitting in this nastiness, this stinking abyss. Uh, we now see the re the vision forward is sustainable regions. We know that in sustainable prosperity is what? Shared prosperity, which is what? Austerity. Well, where are we going to get some of the Nut, the, the thumbnail view of that in the Agenda 2030. I've talked about all of this before. This cog is going to move forward. Their region forward is going to be a sustainable place. Under prosperity that they define. Remember, it's always through their view. In addition, if that's not bad enough, they're going to do some other stuff. In addition, the cog 
the region's local governments and several civic and nonprofit organizations have endorsed the vision and incorporated it into their own planning efforts. There's the buy-in. But you notice it wasn't the local government. It was a local government and a stakeholder. At least, well, just in the sense of this one. There's probably groups of them. All doing what? They're all shoving the sustainable future on all of this. And the people that are sitting in the commissions are likely sustainable agendites. So when we think we can, you know, oh, this is going or this is not going, you didn't even know about a cog, you didn't even, you didn't even have a clue of how they're doing it. What are they doing? They're, they're enforcing sustainability. Well, is that so? Is that so? Dude behind the woodshed, is that really true what you're saying about sustainability? It could be just a sustainable, something that goes on and on. Well, on the same page, folks. They define what sustainability is. Again, we could be absent, we could be dumb, we could, uh, oh, yeah, we know what it is and turn away, but they're telling us what they're doing. They're, the vision forward, the progressive move forward is to do what? The leaders that they give the partnership awards to uh, are going to elevate social equity as a planning priority. Where do you get social equity from, folks? This is just not being prosperous on and on. You never heard them do talk about the word wealth, did you? No, it's prosperity like in austerity. You're going to move, elevate social equity. That's one of the pillars, isn't it, of sustainable development. It's not the environmental pillar. That's under the EPA. But they're, what are the purposes here? The leaders that are given the, that are in the partnership that are given awards for doing that. Nice boy. Live with the stars that they put on their refrigerators, apparently. They're going to elevate social equity as a planning priority. Do you, do you think this nonsense insanity you see is going to go away when there's people that are actually putting social equity one-third of the imposition of sustainable development in your region's funding streams and infrastructure building, do you think you're not going to see social equity involved in this? A foreign concept local to you, subverting your local government. Do you think that if the local leaders here that have power to implement this are going to have already decided that when you go down and talk to your commissioner or your city councilor, you think that they're going to give two hoots about what you say when you sit there screaming yet red face that they're violating your rights? What else might this uh, leaders be doing? In the same page, folks, where we talk about sustainable, you want to know what it is, region forward, coalition, the coalition of the willing, we heard in international states, the coalition to go against, to take out the is, 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 is us, the false front. The coalition is here, the region forward coalition, they're bringing a, a, an armed insurrection against you, you don't even see it coming. But what else do they want to do besides enforcing as a priority social equity in their planning? But remember, they're planning out to 2045. If you think I'm focused on 20, 2030, forget that. They've got a 20, 2100, century 2100 plan as well. These people are so far ahead. So keep arguing with me, but that's okay. Keep arguing amongst yourself, but that's okay. These people are, are going to get what they want because no one resists them, and then properly. So they're going to see, what else are they going to do? Let's see, can we figure out what the focus is going to be relative to, we know they're doing transportation, this cog coming down. We now know social equity will be part of those plannings. What else might they do in the, who might be queued up for a sustainable, progressive future? Celebrating 10 years of regional climate and energy progress and looking ahead to the next decade. These folks have been 10 years ahead of you on everybody that, yes, we know climate change is a fraud or not. They've been 10 years ahead utilizing the fraud of climate change before anybody understood it. And they're going to be planning for it the next 10 years. Why? Because you're crickets. Climate and energy progress. That's progressive. What's the climate? What is a cog going to do to the climate? Don't think in your natural sense. Think about your fraud sense, the the creation of an illusion, the creation of a false front in order to solve the, the problem that they've fabricated. This is climate change. This is the, uh, the, the false dichotomy between energy and fossil fuels and climate. This is the fraud. These people as a cog are going to move forward in celebration 
their implementation of a climate agenda, which is what? Climate change, which is what? A weapon used by the sustainable development in position. How do I know that? Well, you go read their documents. It's all part of it. Remember? Bar Association, House Delegates Resolution, since what, 91? It's in their documents. One of them, one of the documents of which they resolved to promote a concept called sustainable development. What did we sue in 2013? The Bar Association for doing the treason of the implementation and agreement and promotion of sustainable development in 2013. So they go 10 years back. They weren't too far ahead of me. That was when everyone was having a question. These cogs, I've told you, that the cogs came to my awareness in the 80s. I didn't, know the, I didn't understand the importance for another 10 years. The 10 years after that, we're, we're now seeing who the, who the culprits are and at least getting it on the record what we thought we saw, uh, and they agreed. They agreed that we saw treason. So you keep wanting to fight and argue or not argue, whatever. This is the destruction of your country. And this is not just the United States. It's easy to see in the United States relative to our land laws, though. That's why I, I think I focus on it, because I'm familiar with it. It's where I live. I don't live everywhere. I can't know all the states. I know a couple states. I certainly know the, the state that covers all of them on the federal law for grants of minerals. Every state has to be cognizant of that one. So, you see, I've refined how I would approach all this, too, by doing that. Uh, you can, too, folks. So they're talking goals and targets and guides and decisions and measure progress, that measure the progress. That's all the sustainable method. It's how they implement it. They, do the, they take the data in, the big data. They take it in. They monitor what's going on. They take in the data from the monitoring. Right? We've been all through this. They then take and analyze the data, and then they compare that, what that data says up to where it's interfering with their plan for the future, and they go and target that stuff that's going to be a, the friction to them while they impose the friction on you. Remember, we heard that in the Hertz thing, bringing up the first article. The region forward, not the watershed, not production, not wealth. Yeah, if you're not pulling from that correctly, you're looking at a servitude into the future by bureaucrats, or worse. These are organized criminals in my mind. These are, I, I can't, it's kind of a hard word to even get your, ma right, your mind wrapped around. This is treason, folks. This is the subversion of a body of laws that if you give me any credit at all, I can tell you at least to the land law provision and disposal was unique in all that I can find in the history of man. And it is the thing that is the distinction that allows us a place as people. And they're subverting all that, and we're letting it. We're letting it happen, and it's done through these mechanisms. Let's move on. And I go on and on with this stuff, folks. I don't even know what to do. I'm not even getting in depth. I moved to Fresno now. Just anywhere. I can go anywhere. What caught me with this one, and I picked a few. I looked at a few, and I pulled some down just to, just to be able to comment on things. We didn't hear anything new here when we see the list, but I want to point out something new that occurred to me when I finally got to this pain. And it is a pain. What we do, what does a COG do by their admission on their webpage? Fresno's COG primary functions are transportation planning and programming. Well, here we are. What did the wiki say? It's implementing a federal plan. Why do the COGs have so much control is another thing. Why not just over transportation? Now, they say that their primary function is our, our transportation. That has to be federal. But let's look at what they put on their list of, uh, of icons across the top of the sheet here of their page. Planning, programming. You don't think you're programmed? This is programming. Legislation. This is a local nonprofit, an NGO, folks, that does legislation before your state legislature to do what? Promote them resources they're involved in, air quality, and modeling. Well, that's that GIS stuff that my colleague set up years and years ago that they've adulterated. Let me go back to these lists. Planning, programming, legislation, resources, air quality, modeling. I want uh, people, I've said this before, but when I saw that, the only thing that came to my mind when I saw that list was you need to go or remind myself as I'm thinking about it, 
the World Bank Toolkits. If you can find those, as I said, when I started doing any talking on it, they seem to get hidden. They're still probably out there. Go find the World Bank Toolkits, and you'll find the list of the massive amount of things that they're utilizing, that they have a toolkit, a thing, a wrench that goes into you use in a local government, and you use to dismantle their system and impose this stuff. When I read that list across the top of this, what we do, even though they show they, show they function, they, their function is primary transportation, the World Bank Toolkit came to mind. It reminded me that these people are well organized. They've got a toolkit to do and dismantle anything to reconstruct it for the view forward in regionalism. What we do. They dismantle, they don't tell you this, they dismantle and destroy your existence. And they make the future the way they want, and the guidance, by their own tech, uh, terminology, by their own use of the words, and where we find the association, is to promote United Nations Sustainable Development. I'll say it again. I know this wasn't even in my mind before, but it's repeating it. You keep going down to your councilman or your commissioner, and you go red face or even not red face. You go nice and calm, and you speak to them. They're not going to listen to you, and this is why. Until you go and figure out how to interfere with this connection and point out how it violates that decision to agree to this violates some, under, some fundamental power that this power cannot subvert. But attempts to, you show that felony, you're probably not going to, you're speaking to the, you're, you're screaming to the trees. And this is like the problem with the federal thing in the G, the 5G with the federal government agency. It has a standard, it goes to an expert, experts say, COGS are experts. COGS are the central hub of how all this starts to work. And it's not the sole one, so don't get focused too much, but you, you'll get the idea. I don't really attack the COGS. We do it a different way. I figured a different way, which I won't talk about. We we attack the COGS imposition a different way. That way I'm not attacking the COG either, am I? But if you don't have an understanding of the COGS, you won't even understand how to begin to look at this. You won't understand while you're looking at the council or commissions and they're just going to, just a big smile on their face waiting for you to shut up. Now, of all the things they talk, you look forward through all this, uh, the MW COG is another place I found that they speak to having authority over food. An essential of life starts to get the regional attention it needs. Among life's basic essentials, clean air and water and food and shelter, food and agriculture have been underrepresented in our planning for a more livable, prosperous, accessible, and sustainable metropolitan Washington. Many have heard the phrase farm to table. It captures part of what we mean by the term food system. The set of interconnected activities from agricultural production and processing to getting food to the plate to composting and disposal, our food system is local, regional, national, and global in scale. Now they brought in the production. Now they're focusing on your production and your wealth. Is this actually regional? No, not in our system of government, United States of America, not at all. Only in the veneer of the government. Is our food, do we have a food system? Not actually. We do have incentives for people to grow food and then a market for them to sell it to and consumers that take value added in commerce to go and consume the thing. But do we really have farm to table, or is that really a promotion? I've told you, that's a promotion. You could look at it from farm to table, but actually the property rights are from farm to market, aren't they? I guess there's some restaurants out there on farms that have grown fresh to your plate. I guess they could do that, but that would be farm to market too, wouldn't it? See, they've adulterated this idea of what market uh, farm to table is by by well, adulterating the market, and then you forgot what they've done is they've connected their authority, which is commerce. And that's a violation. It's a violation to production, because production is not commerce. 
But everybody doesn't understand that. I say everybody. Anybody that's making a decision does not understand this. They go farm to table instead of saying, wait a minute now, we can only look at commerce to table. So they are now coming for your food. What did I talk to you years and years ago when all those federal laws came through? Food security this and security that. Security this and food security was one of them. I said, they're coming after your food. Now the cogs are now, you see it, they're saying it. They're now putting it on as, a, as an importance, or your food. If you don't understand the importance of this, I, folks, I just don't know what to tell you. You need to understand the importance of this in context of what I've said before. They intermingle and commingle things of production and uh, commerce. They then take control, absolute control. They then control, because most people don't understand their production land disposal rights, they could take control and they end up utilizing land taxes in order to subvert that condition to maintain more control and code enforcement and all this other stuff. So they've interposed themselves what used to be local uh, na and national. They've now put regional. Then they've added global. Now, it may be that you could put stuff into global production. I know the timber industry, before it was destroyed by eco-terrorists and bad policies to support a sustainable future, a, a future of austerity and, and poverty and all this other nonsense that they're putting on us to watch out for the carbon market and the carbon pollution. Uh, I know that there's industries in the timber that would go international. That's agriculture. That's production. But typically, is it all that much? Is everybody into commerce? And even so, if I have a contract as a producer in timber to go to to a country, isn't that still farm to market if that's where my market is? But these people will control your future. They're now f turning their gaze to control food. As I told you years ago, when the feds made the laws of modernization and enhancement of, of food security, and I told you, watch out, you're going you're gonna to see lots of poison food coming. And haven't we had lots of poisoning going on, lots of bacteria, lots of things going on, and no real security. It isn't anything about that. It's about this stuff. It's about this regulation of your life. And it's all coming through transportation. Remember, they said our focus is on transportation. How are they even doing it? How they're doing it is because not very many, and I'm only a handful, if that many, know of this problem of the the pirates putting a bridge across the ship of production from the ship of commerce. And for the most part, the producers haven't knocked the, knocked the, uh, the stair, the, the ladders that have been thrown across and the ropes that are lashing this to, together. They haven't been cutting those and breaking them. Now, I'm asking us to do that. We have, but we can't. These people that have the control of your life are reaching out to your food. It's other areas too. You go through these lists, you'll see how extensive it was. I can't even, I can't cover it. But here we come in, uh, like now we're moving out of what uh, response we're seeing in the world about all this. The United States, uh, states looking to reshape transport regulation. Well, they have no control of that, so they have to be talking to the feds. How are they in any position of power when they're actually agencies of the federal government implementing the federal rule and through their cogs? The collection of United States Northeastern states already have a regional cap and trade program for major power plants. Then we just hear that subversion I just talked about it through an OHOV article on the internet. We get to cap and trade, which is what? Climate change, which is what? Sustainable development. The Northeast is already underneath the implementation as against major power plants. It's all a fraud. I can't even get into it. But this is the news. This is what you're getting on. This is the connection. Regional is your connection to a cap and trade, exactly what the regional cogs are imposing. And your local governments are agreeing to them. And everyone is crickets to this nonsense. Now the region is pursuing a similar approach for transportation, an, ambig an ambitious and challenging endeavor, but one that is an outgrowth of frustration with inaction at the federal level. 
the aim of the Transportation and Climate Initiative, as the program is called, would be a re to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from cars and trucks while structuring the program in such a way that it leads to net economic and social benefits. What do we just hear? They're focusing on social equity. Net equity in that construction is a fraud. Their, their, their accounting is a, is, is a fraudulent accounting. And we also know it's a fraudulent imposition because greenhouse gases is a fraud. There's no such thing. And it wouldn't be in the carbon market anyway. Anybody who wants to study this realizes that water, if it is a greenhouse, would be that water would be the, the main greenhouse contaminant. But we see the Transportation and Climate Initiative is transportation and climate. They don't do anything separate, that the COGS in your local area are making plans way past 2045 to implement. And what's going to cause more imposition on you, higher prices, uh, higher costs, uh, diminished capacity, interference with your property rights. Uh, and then you see they're going to steal your food and, and, and cause changes to that. Remember, the Biodiversity Treaty under which all of this sustainable development is working agrees to genetic modification. Go read it. If you think these issues with uh, endangered species ha have to just do with the nature. No, this was set up a long time ago to destroy you. And I get people arguing amongst themselves. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I, I really don't get it. The transportation and climate and is conjunctive. This was never separate. The Northeast is already under it. They're under regional control. You did it through the COGS, and they are imposing cap and trade, which is sustainable. It's UN foreign imposition, and they got your local governments to agree. And the people that are in those offices are either, well, I just have to say they're all committing treason, whether they understand that or not. A little HOV story about uh, HOV and COGS adjusting your e-credit social credit condition. If that doesn't tie this whole thing together on the future they want as opposed to the one you might, I don't know what else I can talk to you about. If I if you don't understand the local power, sense power, how a COG has and that they've had, you don't understand what you're up against. If you think your government is operating the way it's supposed to be, you're deluded. It's operating the way it needs to be to bring the agenda of the occupiers have imposed upon us since well before us. We see, again, the power of the feds to rule all this. You think the states are got states' rights? Nonsense. They only have it in a couple capacities, and that's what I focus on is those narrow path capacities that are still available. Like you go through coordination, not co not cooperation. You insert the laws uh, as the laws that have been laid down. Don't make them up and don't agree to the ring in your nose. Uh, the FCC forces California to drop the plans to government fees and taxes. It was all done on simple terminology. The power of the Fed over the state to control the local government. You think you have states' rights. You think your local government's controlling anything and you don't know about your cog. You don't know about this dynamic? We're a deluded people if we don't understand this stuff. We have no capacity to understand uh, what we need to do, and you literally cannot get what I've been saying uh, on even where to begin to start looking at it. Today, I hope, uh, I hope I've brought, brought something that you can start to look for. Uh, again, it's just a small bit, but it's there as a major controller of why our life is the way it is why things have been bringing the international specter has been coming in the foreign ideas have been coming into this nation notwithstanding who rules thank you for listening to me today I hope something I said helped you out uh, Grimmer, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and uh, anybody who's been uh, saving, uh, spreading the, sharing the broadcast, I appreciate all that I'll be here next week tech diffs are nature willing Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 